Funding for the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union, Iowa Farm Bureau, Girls State Volleyball Championships is provided by... The path to greatness starts early. The Iowa Farm Bureau believes in Iowa's youth and their pursuit of greatness. That's why we're proud to be the title sponsor of the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union. Each student's effort is important, and when one rises, we all rise to a better Iowa. Fairway, along with Nabisco, Frito-Lay, and Sara Lee, is a proud sponsor of the Iowa Girls Sports Championships. We congratulate all the schools and student athletes participating in this year's Girls High School State Volleyball Championships. Fairway, proud to care for the places we work and live. By Musco Lighting, the sports lighting specialists, providing lighting systems for you, your project, and your community. Championship coverage live from Cedar Rapids, Iowa continues here from the 2018 High School Volleyball Championships. We've handed out a couple of those trophies already to the 5A and 4A champions. Now it's Class 3A as the Kemper Catholic Knights. They've been ranked number one all season long. Take on the second ranked Tipton Tigers who returned their entire starting lineup from last year's state tournament team. Greetings my friends, Eric Braley and Barb Randall welcoming you back to the broadcast. And Barb, why is this gonna be a great matchup? Well, I think it'll be fun to watch. This is Tipton's first time to the state finals and Kemper was ousted earlier than they wanted to be last year. So it should be a little bit of a chance for revenge. Let's take a look at Tipton. Last year, their first ever trip to the state tournament and they made a great growth from last year to this year, setting school records for match and set victories in a season. They have some players that can really play the sport of volleyball. I love Summer Daniel. She's one of my favorite players at this tournament. She has great court awareness and also great control over the ball. Kemper, 44 and one overall. That's a lot of pressure when you're ranked number one preseason and each and every night you gotta bring it. Well now, they have a chance to really prove to everyone they are the number one ranked team. Well, and they expected to be in this match last year and were beaten in the semifinals. So it'll be interesting to see if Amy Adams can lead her team to a state championship this year. Ready for the team intros with public address announcer Rick Blackwell. And they will call the teams out with smoke and fire and energy as we get set for this 3A matchup. 2018 Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union Girls Class 3A State Volleyball Championship match. Fans, please welcome to the floor the Tipton Tigers. Tipton comes in here. They were a little deer in, uh, headlights, in the headlights yep. look where last year was the first time they'd ever been here. They didn't know what to expect and they got swept quickly 3-0. Oh, it's a different look, different feel this year. Absolutely, and they think they can make some noise here today. Kemper, they've been here before many, many, many times, but they're on a mission. Number one from the start day one of the season. They want to finish number one at the last day of the season here today. And they should probably get it done. They have the offensive power. Fans, it's now time to introduce the players and coaches in today's championship matchup. First, for the Tipton Tigers. Number two, Haley Stewart. Number three, Alex Hoffman. Number five, Bailey Schmidt. Number eight, Madison O'Leary. Number 10, Emily Herbson. Number 11, Grace Nichols. Number 14, Ashlyn Downs. Number 17, Kelly Leisure. The assistant coach is Amanda Volbrecht and Jen Johnson. Now for your starters. Number four, Summer Daniel. Number six, Amanda Smith. Number nine, Jamie Coffrin. Number 12, Lakin Hermiston. Number 13, Blake Ayler. Number 15, Cameron Chapman. 
The libero is number one, Carly Kemberling. And the head coach is Amy Colander. Now let's meet the Kemper Catholic Knights. Number one, Kenya Trosh. Number six, Brooklyn Baki. Number seven, Elise Jansen. Number 10, Amber Moore. Number 12, Allie Mertz. Number 14, Madison Leonard. Number 16, Mariah Neighborhouse. The assistant coaches are John Wagner, Nicole Martin, Morgan Molak, and Lori Butel. Now for your starters. Number two, Amy Adams. Number three, Grace Mullet. Number four, Anna Niehaus. Number five, Courtney Schekelberg. Number nine, Kara Peter. Number 13, Macy Overmole. The number, the bear, the barrow is number 11, Mallory Bading. Pardon me, ladies and gentlemen, her number is 19. And the head coach is Keith Stickrod. Let's meet your officials for tonight's game. The first referee is Sean Peterson. The second referee is Stuart Dusenberry. The line judges are Jody Willinga and Kent Prescott. Ladies and gentlemen, let's play volleyball. Let's play volleyball indeed. Barb, let's take a look at the keys to the match. First for Tipton coming in here as the number two ranked team in class 3A. Well, they really need to do a good job serving. And, and so we say serve for aces because they need to make sure that Kemper can't get to their strength and their right side and middle hitters. And then they need to stay aggressive offensively. And they've done a great job of that this, this tournament so far. They go up and they are still hitting when other teams are tipping. And so they need to keep that going through this match. Kemper has been dominant this year. What's it going to take to seal the deal, the cherry on top, the championship trophy? Well, I say they need to pass nails because their strengths are in the middle and on the right side. And you can only set those hitters if you're passing well. So they need to pass and put, it on the, put the ball on the setter's head. And then they need to stay steady when things get tough. Tipton will push them, and they may not be used to that from some of the matches they've had this season. So they just need to stay steady, steady and stay with the game plan. The stage is set. Kemper beat Clarion Goldfield Downs 3-0 to zero in the quarterfinals. They had to battle and defeat a very good Osage team yesterday in the semifinals. Winning that fifth set 15-13 for Tipton in the quarterfinals. They beat New Hampton 3-1. to one. They were down 9-1, to one. had to battle back and win that one in the semifinals. They took care of a very good Mount Vernon team 3-1 to one yesterday. These are the two top teams in Class 3A. And why not do battle here live in front of everyone watching on Iowa Public Television for a chance to claim champion or runner-up? And it, there is a big difference. For the rest of your life, if you end up in that runner-up position, that's all you remember, and it's a little bit of a bitter memory. Speaking from an experience, Barb? <laughs> yes, I am. First serve, and we are officially underway. Tipton will wear the white uniforms, and in the red and yellow celebrating, it's the Kemper Catholic Knights of Carroll. one nothing to the Knights, and a quick side out. The serve by Overmull, the five foot nine inch senior setter. Blocked at the net, but it's tooled out of bounds. High flying in, that's Summer Daniel. We'll call her name a lot. The junior has committed to play volleyball at Utah. Listed at five foot nine inches. Aces across the board, one to one here in the first. Over the block. Working near side. Kemper has options. Tipton gets a good swing. Good rally here. Patient, patient on both sides of the net. And it ends 
with a two contact lift call against Tipton. Well, and that's a good rally, and if that's any indication of what we're going to see here this afternoon, it should be a fun match. Yeah, it's not just a bump, set, kill. It's long rallies, and that's what you expect at the championship match. So Another we'll point, and it's 2-2 two to two now. We'll see a lot of that from Tipton. They like to set a quick set out to Summer Daniel. On that play, she probably should have taken a swing at it because she had the line wide open, and she may have taken someone's head off if she would have swung at that ball. Here's Coffrin with the serve. Good pass, nice set. And it's going to be a point for Tipton. The student sections are going wild here, trying to do everything in their power to cheer on their fellow classmates to a state title. There's a look at the replay. Not the best set there and having to change direction. Smoked it down to the corner, perfect placement. Tipton looking real good early on. Well, one of the keys for Tipton is, you know, play that back part of the court because everybody tends to get sucked in. And so if you hit the ball into those deep corners, you're going to have success. I guess that would be a, a key for anybody playing volleyball, <laughs> not just Tipton. More than one player getting involved here for Tipton, though. The run continues, now leading by three. Still very early stages of this first set. Kemper to the outside, through the block, down for the point. Good look at Courtney Schenkelberg, the 5'11 senior outside hitter. That's her first kill. And with the side out, Niehaus back to serve. Kemper runs a little bit of an unorthodox offense. Their two main players are number two, Amy Adams, and number nine, Kara Peter. And they play different positions. but. Coach Stickrod has put them opposite each other. And the reason I think that he's done that is so that he always has one of his big guns in the front row. They try and go as fast as humanly possible. Talking with their coach, he said, I said, so what's the deal with the offense? He's like, we, we just try and push it quick tempo. And obviously the faster the offense, the less time the defense has to recover and get set up defensively. Well, and, and that will leave wide open hits just like Adams had there a minute ago. No Tip. block up. Down to the point. 6-4, Tigers. Smart tip. It looks like maybe that's Tipton's game plan. Even though it's in the name of their school, that doesn't have to be in their game plan. But um, the hitters have come out tipping, and I don't know if that's game plan or nerves. We'll see. No tip on that attack. A good swing, and that's her second kill. And that's the thing, tipping works very effectively because everyone's expecting a big spike like that. But if you continue to tip, then the defense is going to adjust and the tips just aren't gonna work. Absolutely. The most effective tips happen after you've been hammering, 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 get the defense stuck back on their heels, and then you tip because the defense is stuck and they can't move forward. Nice start to this Class 3A championship. Hermiston behind the service line for the Tipton Tigers. A 5'5 senior defensive specialist. Good serve. Through the block. Unable to convert on the overpass. Got down for the kill. I wasn't sure because there were two blockers there, full extension, but somehow that ball got through and down for the point. Well, and we can tell you why it got through because their arms were straight up versus being pushed over the net. If those arms would have been pushed over the net, that ball would have stayed on Kemper's side. Amy Adams, the leader on this team serving in the back row. Nice pass, quick set to the back. And look at that defense, that back row for Tipton. Good hustle, have to hit it over. And it will result in a Tigers kill. Well, I think we've discovered one thing, that Tipton certainly isn't afraid of this stage. <laughs> no Maybe doubt about it. Maybe the first time they're here, but they're loving it. 
Tipton last year, first trip to the state tournament. Coach said last year was big. The players, the coaches even, were really wide-eyed, taking everything in, had no idea what to expect. And that quarterfinal match just went so fast. It's a 3-0 sweep. She tried to call it a couple timeouts to slow things down, but in a blink of an eye, she said it felt like it took just five minutes. Well, they had all off-season, and they had all this season prepare to get back to the stage. Well, and that's one of the reasons that I think coaches should bring their young teams here, the junior high, middle school age teams, so that, that makes they, sense. Can, they can get an idea of what this atmosphere is like. This is, I tell everybody, this is one of the best kept secrets in the state of Iowa. The atmosphere here, during the normal week, there are two coaches, two coaches, two courts that go the opposite way of this court, and then for the Friday big day, they turn the court, have one court, and it's just unbelievable to be in an atmosphere like this. We try and bring you the sights, the sounds, the energy that's what's taking place live in front of us here on your TV screens, but it, it's hard to capture it, it really all unless is. you're in person. And it's hard to capture it if you're in the stands as opposed to playing on the court. Everything's magnified yeah. because this is the final volleyball match for 2018 for Class 3A. Wow, what a quick move and play. And that's what makes Peter so good. She is up in the air, ready for the ball, waiting for it right between the blocker's hands. Nice job being up early, Kara. That ball was set really tight to the net. Good athletic play to stay out of the net and move it over. Better swing on that attack, and it's down for a kill. And you can expect Daniel to do a lot of that kind of thing. She is only 5'9", which is a little bit undersized uh, for the type of player she is, but she gets kills because she has such good ball control. She can tip anywhere she wants. She can roll any roll shot anywhere she wants, and she can use the blocker's hands whenever she wants to, and that makes her pretty hard to stop. That one sails out of bounds. Summer Daniel leading all players with four kills on nine attempts just a tad under the 500 attack percentage. Very balanced offense for Kemper Catholic. No one with more than two kills so far. Still the early stages of this opening set of the Class 3A championships. Wow, that's a tough play to make. You love that lefty, Amy Adams. Well, I love the lefty on the right side. Everybody who listens should know that, but Amy Adams is one of their go-to hitters, so she's gonna get a lot of sets, and when Tipton doesn't put a block up on her, she's gonna get a lot of kills. Adams, 372 kills in the regular season, averaging nearly four kills per set. All knotted up at 11 apiece here in the first. Kara Peter, the 6'3 junior middle blocker into the net, service air, and the Tigers get the point here. Well, talking about Tipton, their team motto is the best is yet to come, and that's something they decided in the off season. Printed t-shirts, they looked that motto each and every day, and they truly believed this year would be the best ever. And it already has been, regardless of if they win <laughs> today exactly or not. Right. Yep. Most set victories, most match victories, and advancing all the way to the championship game. But well, something tells me they're not just content yet. Well, and they have several underclassmen on their team. So once they get a taste of this, those underclassmen are gonna then lead for next year, trying to get their team back here again. Into the net. Attack air. Makes it a one point ball game here in the first set. Barb, you live in Cedar Rapids here and you see what this state championship does for this city each and every time. And the hotels are filled, the parking garages are filled, the restaurants the are filled. The traffic is crazy. <laughs> the traffic too. Because the state of Iowa comes to Cedar Rapids, much like going on in Cedar Falls with the high school football championships, much like what happens with girls and boys basketball and wrestling in Des Moines, much like softball at Fort Dodge. What do you love about the fact that your community that you lives in gets to host this. Well, one of the things is it makes it really easy for me. <laughs> I, I come here every day and watch almost every match, and so that makes it easy. 
But it does, it does really help the economy. It brings a lot of people into the, the community and the things that the Cedar Rapids community has done since the 2008 floods flood has been tremendous and so now people are getting to see some of the neat things that we get to see on a daily basis i really like his beautiful placement there grabbing that back line let's take a look and just see how close this ball was well, just you, inside but where did it land in the golden corner in the golden which corner, is exactly absolutely. you former d1 coach <laughs> preaches all the time now there's service there we've seen a couple of those and let's see if a couple of those heirs could come back to haunt the Knights as they trail by just a couple of points. No team has taken a timeout as we're just past the halfway point of the first set. Kemper, Keith Stickrod in his 10th year of coaching, 291 wins, just 61 losses. Double contact called on that set. That is a look at Coach Stickrod. They finished second place in the Hawkeye 10 Conference. They went nine and one in conference play. It was their only loss of the year to Council Bluff St. Albert. They get the point there. 45 and one overall because of good blocking just like this, Barb. Well, the, they didn't exactly jump at the same time, but when you jump doesn't matter as long as your arms are up there at the same time and pushed over the net. Good swing, better block, quickly back to Kemper's side of the net. Free ball over the net to Tipton. In system, got it through for the point. Well, this is going to be decided by just a couple points because it's, no team's been able to go on a run so far here. No, there haven't been any real runs. There have been points of three scored, but nothing more than that, and so it will be a, it should be a tight first set. Tip. A little give and go. Down the line, the antenna's waving. And when that antenna is waving, that means the ball hit it. That means point for Kemper. Well, and that antenna is lined up with the outside of the boundary line. So if the ball crosses the net, outside of the antenna or touches the antenna, it's considered out of bounds. Not the best pass and a real athletic set and it results in a kill. Barb, she was almost in the net, Summer Daniel, and was able to contort her body to keep it in play. Well, I think that's part of the ball control that she has. She has good body control and she's obviously played a lot of volleyball to be able to do the things she's doing with the ball. Smoke that one down the far sideline. Get out of the way. <laughs> that was a great swing. Niehaus really just took it to him and, and hammered that line. Like, I, like I've said in the past, it's really hard to dig a, a straight line drive at you right down the line because it comes at you so quickly. Able to work that one through. And again, neck and neck as we head on down the home stretch here, playing to 25, win by two. That is the sixth kill for Tipton Summer Daniel. Here's Amanda Smith, the 5'10 senior, the other setter. Barb, do you want to talk about the difference between a 6'2 offense as opposed to probably the more conventional 5'1 offense that the majority of schools use? Yeah, and actually, a lot of teams here at the state tournament have run a 6-2 this year. But a 5-1 is when you have one setter and that setter goes all the way around in all six rotations. So three times she's in the back row, three times she's in the front row. A 6-2 is when the setter rotates to the front row, a hitter comes in for her. When, she wrote, uh, when the hitter rotates to the back row, a setter comes in for her. And they're placed oppositely, so it's always happening at the same time. So your setter's always in the back row, and you always have three attackers. Now, Tipton's 6-2 is a little bit different because Summer Daniel is both the setter when she's in the back row and the hitter like when she she's in the front did. row, like she and is right now. Yep. Point for Kemper, they needed that one. And the interesting thing with that as we look at the replay, 
That's not something they're going to switch back and forth during this match, right? No. They've no. decided it's going to be 6-2. That's their yes. offense they're running. Kemper runs a 5-1, so you'll see. Macy Overmole will be back row, and then she'll move to the front row. And when she's a front row setter, she that's when she can actively dump and be a little bit more offensive above the height of the net. When she's back row, she's going to dump in a different way. 20 to 18. Having trouble getting this one over the net. Tipton. <laughs> A very well executed play, and Summer Daniel is getting sets, she's getting digs, she's getting seven kills already, and it's a three-point lead for Tipton. Let's listen in to the Tipton huddle. We're playing our game, right? We're playing our game. And their serves for each other. Exactly. Our serves are aggressive. We're also serve receiving very well. Keep that up. Keep that up. right here we need more first balls okay let's keep going at it right here okay passing the ball go after it okay be be aggressive if we're aggressive from the service line all the way through they're not passing well so we have to be aggressive let's go Come on. Three, two, three, three. Go. so a couple start. things were said there one of the players said they're not going to roll over and die and that's true Kemper knows that this set is not over and so Tipton needs to Keep going, pedal to the metal. She also said stay aggressive, serve aggressively. That is important with hitters like Kemper has. And then she wants the first ball put away. We appreciate all the head coaches letting us put microphones on them so we can listen inside their huddles throughout our entire day of coverage. Barb starting to pull away, Tipton right now. What have they been doing different really in the last five minutes to get that separation? Well, their, their offense is quick. So when they shoot a ball to the outside and the hitter is able to go up without a block against her, that is advantageous to the hitter. And then they've been getting blocks. And that's always a quick point. Another attack air. Kemper right now hitting 179 as a team. Tipton hitting in the 200s. Needing to make a run now is Kemper Catholic. Needing a side out. Daniel. Into the net. Set point in favor of Tipton. Tough serve. Attack air. Smart to let that one sail by, but a lot of work needs to be done by the Knights, even if they can't climb their way out of this big of a deficit, because there's no room for air. Getting three points here could be huge for their momentum, for their confidence heading into the second set. Well, and that's what you're playing for right now, is getting a head start in that second set by gaining some momentum here. You don't carry the points over, right. but you can carry the momentum over. A pretty impressive first set victory for the Tipton Tigers. 25-19, a big reason for that eight kills. Eight of them already for Summer Daniel. Look at the final point, it As sealed a, the deal. A kill for Daniel. She's having a good day so far. <laughs> We're a long way from done. Tipton. Wins the first one, back with more of the Class 3A Finals here on Iowa Public Television. Enjoy some of Broadway's best music with this beloved Rodgers and Hammerstein classic. The sound of music. Featuring more than a few of your favorite songs, Raindrops it's a fresh take on the true story of Maria. And the Von Trapp family singers, starring Cara Toynton and Julian Ovenden. Don't miss The Sound of Music on Great Performances. Tune in to Iowa Public Television later tonight at 9. Music, drama, lifestyle, and biographies. 
Iowa Public Television's Festival has it all. Join us November 17th through the 18th and 24th through the 28th. Explore your community with Member Card as your guide. When you make a qualifying gift to this PBS station, you'll receive our member card, which entitles you to savings at restaurants, cultural and family attractions, bed and breakfast, wineries, even sports, golfing, and lodging in your area. Use the card a few times and it pays for itself. The member card app will help you explore all the benefits wherever you are. Learn more at IPTV.org or call 800-779-7000 and let the fun and savings begin. Do you Snapchat? So does IPTV. Add Iowa Public TV or snap our code. Get live peeks at our productions as they happen in real time. See exclusive behind the scenes content. Connect with all our social networks by visiting IPTV.org slash social. Tipped in wins it 25-19 over Kemper Catholic in the first set of the Class 3A championships. Let's take a look at some of those highlights. And Barb, what really jumped out at you? They played within a point or two of each other till they got to about 18, and then tipped and stepped on the accelerator and pulled away. Well, and like we expected, the three players to get the most sets did. Summer Daniel for Tipton, and then Amy Adams and Kara Peter for, actually Kara Peter didn't, it was Courtney Schenkelberg. So expect a little bit more to go to Kara Peter. Let them lead the way. You see the stats on your screen. Tipton, four more kills, four more digs, one more block, five more assists, and a better hitting percentage as well. That was the difference in the six-point victory over Kemper Catholic. Well, down, but definitely not out. I would not bet against Kemper. They have been number one all season long. Only one loss last year. 2017, they saw a two to zero lead evaporate to eventual champion Waterloo Columbus in the 2017 semifinal. Well, they saw it just go right through their fingertips. And I know that that has been with them all year and something that they've really worked on to get back here to this point. For Tipton, they've really worked on their mental game and culture from last year to this year. Right down the line, a smart place to go with it, and a nice execution. Anna Niehaus, she's a 5'8 junior outside hitter, and she is multi-talented. Over 200 kills this season and a strong attack percentage. Wow, a quick kill by Daniel. So if I'm Kemper, I may commit and, and take my middle have her go out because you know Summer Daniel's going to get set, those quick sets, and from the middle, it's really hard to make it out on, out there on time, which leaves her with a single blocker. So yep. I may just cheat out there and see if I can get a double block up on her. We have a pause here. Jamie Coffrin, by the way, the defending yeah. Drake Relays champion in both the shot put and discus. That's just not 3A. That's, she's the best in the state at both the shot put and discus. Oh, by the way, she's helping lead her team all the way to the state championship volleyball as well. Great athlete. Well, and she'll be on the track and field team at Iowa in college. What I really like about Coffrin is she stays aggressive the whole match. During her other matches, the quarterfinals and semifinals this week when the, when the set was tight and everybody else was tipping, she was swinging at balls and getting kills. It was really fun to watch. The night's looking good. Right now, jumping up to a three to one lead. Definitely not a must win scenario for Kemper, but they don't oh, want it. What in wow. the world? You gotta be kidding me. Wow, what a great play. Heads up play. Let's look at that one again. This is so heads up and a wow. little bit lucky. It shoots. Yeah, yeah. A lot it, lucky, <laughs> right? Yeah, it, it shoots right at Amanda Smith's 
knees and she was able to get it up in the air high enough that Daniel could send it over the net. And we understand not everyone watching on Iowa Public Television maybe know all the rules of the sport of volleyball, but you can bump it with your knee, you could kick it, you can yeah, use any I body part to keep it up. It. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and, and again, the refs here are the best in the state, so they're going to call everything consistently and well, and that was just amazing. Nice swing by Adams on that one. No block up with her, which I think is a mistake. I think Tipton needs to say, hey, wherever Adams goes, yep. we're gonna block, we're gonna put a block up on her. And if we can, let's get two or three. Well, Amy Adams has just been so dominant this year. 372 kills in the regular season, a 425 kill efficiency, 21 aces, 319 digs. 22 blocks. I mean, she is just the epitome of what you're looking for in a high school volleyball player. And she's a lefty. And you like that. I love a lefty on the right side. She's tall. She's six foot one. I mean, it's it, she's like the what you'd choose for a volleyball player. And she has chosen to go to South Dakota for her collegiate career. They're getting a good one. I don't, I don't like when we export all this great talent yeah. out of state, but we've uh, definitely seen, and it's obviously the player's decision. We see a lot of other schools at the D1, D2 level who are here recruiting this state tournament because there's so much talent in the state of volleyball for in the state of Iowa. Yeah, there is so much talent. We've had players go all over this country and representing Iowa in practically every state in the union. I can't think of any in Alaska. Getting the kill on the outside makes it six to four. If you're just joining us, the first set went to Tipton, 25-19, a late run to pull away. Here's Amy Adams, the 6'1 senior outside hitter. Strong serve. Over the block, and that one went down. Amanda Smith. She's one of the two setters in that 6-2 offense. Attacked it from the back line. Blake Ayler, another senior on the Tipton roster. Getting it through the block. Smart heads up play by Grace Moloch. Here's another look at Moloch. Using the blocker's hands. But that's, that's the bad part about using the blocker's hands is you have to make sure that the, the officials see it. <laughs> she was <laughs> making her- As soon as she made yeah. contact, she said, tip, I got you it, saw I got that. It. Yeah, right. Triple block and it results in a block. Summer Daniel. Let's look at our net cam. And you can All three see, blockers. Yeah, their, their hands weren't perfect, but once they touched the ball, they were able to just push it over the net. Trying to go with a really shallow serve was Amanda Smith. End up costing her as it goes into the net. Kemper wearing the red and yellow, tipped in. In the white tops, set her dump, worked to perfection. That was pretty. So that time, the middle, which happened to be Coffrin, was coming in for a quick, and the setter was able to make it look like she was setting the quick, but she pushed it over the net into the deep middle of the court. Disguised it very well. It's like a in football, a fake yes. handoff trick play. Yep. Here's another look at that. So Kara Peter, I have been impressed with her all Me week. Me too. She does a really nice job as a middle. She's six foot three, but she does a really nice job as a middle being everywhere. So as a middle blocker, you have to block absolutely everything that is being attacked at you. And then you have to transition, get off the net, back in for a quick set. And she does that, and not every middle does it, and it's a little bit frustrating for coaches when the middles don't do it, but she is really good. If she's blocking over on the left side and then for some reason has to be over on the left side, on the right side, she gets there. 
mishandled that one. Got Kara Peter, 330 kills, a 486 kill efficiency. But then what she does in digs and blocks is just incredible. Leads the team in blocks. Let's listen inside her team's huddle with Carol Kemper Catholic. Slow this game down, okay? We need to slow down. Play our game. Just slow down and be very aggressive. Let's go right now. Be aggressive. Let's go. Nice. Well, one of the things we heard him say there was slow down. And I, I think he meant because when he talked to us, he said they try and do everything really quickly offensively. But I think what he meant there was more like take a breath, yeah. relax, make sure you get your, your serve in when you're serving, relax when you're passing, that kind of thing, not slower offense or anything like that. Yeah, and talking to him after that victory in the semifinals over Osage, he said the team has had huge focus all year. He pushes them hard all year, and they respond and push each other. They play the game with passion, determination, and a fire in their eyes. He said in that Osage fifth set, he looked through the net at his team, and he was almost scared of just how determined <laughs> and focused team. they were. He knew they were going to pull it out. Amazing attitude. Everyone works hard to make it a special season. He said, I have to give a ton of credit also as we look at the replay, to his assistant coaches who do so much, and the practice players, the players that don't get a step on the court because they push the starters. And we've seen on other teams how important that is. Every player on that bench, whether you're on the court or not, is huge in these matches all season long. The Knights are looking strong. Up 12-8, trying to tie this 3A championship up. They dropped the first set, 25-19. By the way, that's Adam's fifth kill. Lock, but out of bounds. No, it they, it, did it hit? Yep. The line judge called it in. Wow, that was close. Let's see if we can see it on the replay. So she flies in to make contact, to hit it, tool it out of bounds. Pretty close. Yeah, pretty close. And that's why I don't want to do that yeah. job. Yeah, <laughs> well, she had a much better view <laughs> yep. than me, who is on the opposite right. side of the court. She's literally looking down the line. That goes out of bounds. And now a side out, checking in, will be Lakin Hermiston, the 5'5 senior defensive specialist to serve. Very impressed with what I've seen from Kemper here in this second set. Different attitude, different results. Another point, they're starting to pull away. A five point lead at the halfway point of this second set. Adams, five kills. Schenkelberg, four kills. Four for Moloch, and three apiece for Niehaus and Peter. The slide, deep and out of bounds. It, as the play was unfolding, it seemed like it was going to result in a kill. It really did. It didn't look like the block was solid. It looked like Chapman had all the room she needed, and it was she was just a little bit underneath it on her contact. Service ace. Two players just looking at each other, a little unsure of whose ball it was. And now it's a seven-point advantage. Great job of serving by Courtney Schenkelberg. Another tough serve, and it's, wait, it's not a service ace, but it results, results in a point. point. Yep. Well, and it will be interesting to see. Oh, so Tipton's gonna take a timeout. Let's go inside the Tipton huddle, huddle right now and hear what their coach is saying. Yes, they are. Yes, we talked about that, right? We gotta mix it up. As soon as we got mixed up, Cameron got a kill, Emily got a kill. We gotta get it out to the right side. Spread it around, okay? Spread it around. We just said that. Yep, go at him, go at him. Being aggressive, we're passing balls. We're passing balls and we're doing a good job of that, okay? Mix up our offense and go at him. Let's go. Hey, let's go. Hey, no way, Kayla, let's go. 
So Coach Collender wants a mixed up offense, which the way I said it makes it sound goofy. But what she means by that is to not let the Kemper Knights know who's going to be hitting it. One time, give it to your outside. One time, yep. give it to your right side. Set your middle. Set your middle a slide. Set someone in front of you. And, and just don't let them know where your offense is coming from. Coach Collender, 19th year of coaching, 16th year at Tipton, 246 wins in her career. Last year, making it to the state tournament. This year, not only making it, but made it all the way to the state championships here in Class 3A on the brink of trying to bring home the school's first ever championship in volleyball. A seven point deficit for Tipton though, and Kemper is playing red hot. Back set, it's open. Nice dig by O'Leary. Pulled out of bounds, last touch by Tipton, and Kemper celebrates. You can see the confidence growing by Kemper. Well, they, they've gotten a little bit of their belief back. Not that they ever really were completely in disbelief, but they may have been starting to question things, and they are starting to feel good. Set to the outside. Here's Kemper. Back row attack. Came up strong with the back row attack. Good hustle. I was surprised at how well Adams brought it all the way from her position in the back row. Now a little tip. Quick to the middle. Long rally. Is the score going to be 19-10 or 18-11? 18-11, Tipton wins the point. Well, and Tipton did a really nice job with their defense that time, running run a couple balls down that Kemper thought they had won, and then they get up against a single blocker and put the ball away in between the two back row defenders. Back set, tip, line, and it finally hits the pink court. 19 to 11. Such a balanced offense for Kemper. Seven kills for Adams, six kills for Moloch, and four kills for Schenkelberg. On the other side, not very balanced for Tipton. 11 kills for Summer Daniel, and only four for Smith. Is it easier when you can focus on just one player offensively? Absolutely. That's down for another point. And the Knights are rocking and rolling here in this second set. So that's what I was talking about earlier with Peter working so hard. She is blocking, she's at the net, controlling the ball, and then she gets off the net for transition and can put the ball away. That's what a middle blocker needs to do. Caught him off guard. Smart heads up play. Amanda Smith disguised it well, set it over. And the setter's dump results in a point. She has five kills now. Kemper. Almost went in the net there. Blocked. Down for the point for Kemper. They're now just four points away and we'll in a see. very lopsided score right now. From this replay, we'll see why that went down. Her arms were behind her head and then straight up. So that when your arms are like that, you're never going to block the ball. Well, you're rarely going to block the ball on the other side of the net. You need to push over the net for that. <laughs> Setters dump again. Power wins that point. Kara Peter. Well, and Cochran's doing a good job sticking with her, but she might want to think about taking a little bit more of the angles on the blocks. Kara Peter tends to turn it one way or the other, and so if you take away those angles by spreading your arms, uh, that could be advantageous for Cochran. Wow. <laughs> she plays the game so well, she's like an artist out there with her paintbrush and smock and uh, everything. She, she can set, she can dig, she can block. 
and she has a variety of shots, variety of angles. She is like an artist. She knows she probably could paint with acrylics and oils and all the different things. <laughs> She's amazing. Kemper, though, flexing their muscles here. I think they're a little upset they uh, gave up when it was so close, 1919, in that first set. They wanted to make a statement, and they most certainly are right now in the second set. Well, they're definitely in control, and Tipton is kind of where we were talking about last set with Kemper. They are now playing for momentum to head into the third set. The artist serving it up. Kemper, good swing to the outside. Back set slide. Tip. Great rally. That was a great up by baiting. Setters dump. I think we're heading in minute two of this rally here. <laughs> oh, nice roll shot. And we've seen about every type of shot that you could have. Yep. Another beautiful up. And finally, Tipton with the point. Does it feel better when you win those long Absolutely, rallies? Absolutely, yeah, because you're also very, very tired. So it gives <laughs> you a little bit of lift into the next point. But that's a great rally by Tipton. That kind of rally will help build their momentum for the next set. That won't. Service air, and it is set point after a huge performance by the Kemper Catholic Knights. Been number one since day one. And they're one point away from tying this series up one to one. Out of bounds. 24 16 now. It'll be very interesting to see what the third set looks like. Absolutely. Lake and Hermiston, Hermiston has a big job here to keep the ball in because any mistake is uh, the end of the set. Wow! Or any huge kill like yeah, that. That's awesome. Amy Adams and the rest of her team with a statement win in set two. She has eight kills to lead Kemper. They win it 25-16. We got a good one. Oh, this feels like it could go five. Well, I think we might get to see that last kill again. That was an awesome kill. Let's take a look at it here. This is just awesome. She's in the right place. The block isn't out there, and she just hammers it. <laughs> We'll be back with more as we head to the third set of Class 3A championships only on Iowa Public Television. Experience world-renowned musical performances during Festifall. Perry Como was a warm and welcome presence in millions of households for six decades. Fleetwood Mac performs some of the best-known music in rock history. Enjoy 18 never-before-released performances by Peter, Paul, and Mary, and more. Support musical programming on IPTV. Festival, November 17th through the 18th and 24th through the 28th. Hi, I'm Charity Nebbe. The season of food is upon us. Time to bake old favorites, experiment with new flavors, and of course, share them with family and friends. Follow us on social media to catch how-to videos, new recipes, and fresh ideas to celebrate in the most appetizing way possible. Plus, be sure to watch our weekly episodes to taste your way through the holidays. It's the season of food, and we want to celebrate with you on Iowa Ingredient. IPTV Create broadcasts the best of public television's how-to shows in cooking, arts and crafts, gardening, home improvement, and travel. IPTV Create can be found on the Dot 4 sub-channel of your broadcast tuner or check your cable channel guide. Taste, grow, imagine, and explore with IPTV Create. Make a day with Member Card and enjoy your two-for-one savings all day long. When you make a qualifying gift to this PBS station, you'll receive our member card for savings at hundreds of restaurants and attractions where you live. Learn more at IPTV.org and let the savings begin. 
Join the conversation online with Iowa Public Television. Follow us on Twitter. Connect with us on all our social networks. Big win for Kemper Catholic in the second set, 25-16. We're tied at one apiece. Let's take a look at some of the special highlights from that second set in this Class 3A championship. Eric Braley, Barb Randall, bringing you the highlights here on Iowa Public Television. And really, Barb, when I look at Kemper's lineup, they're tall. They are tall. And she's leading the way at six foot three. That is uh, Kara Peter. And then they also have Amy Adams, who's six one. Courtney Schenkelberg is five eleven. They've got a couple other six footers, and so that's that's pretty big for three A. We pretty much flipped the advantage from set one to set two. Three more kills, uh, two less digs, and then. Uh, one more assist, but better all defense as well for Kemper in that second set specifically. Eight kills for Adams, six for Moloch, five apiece for Schenkelberg and Peter, and four for Niehaus. For Tipton, it really has been Summer Daniel. 12 kills, 37 attempts. She also has seven assists and eight digs. She's going to end with a triple-double before we're all said and done with here. Yeah, and I've seen two balls that I think she should have gone up and hammered. Maybe she didn't feel like she was in the right position, but that last one was definitely one she should have taken a swing at. Good swing there by Colin by making sure that the block was there, but she knew exactly what attack she needed to take. Yep. One to one. That's our series. That's our score here in the third. Locked it. Here's the thing. When you're playing on Championship Friday, yep. you can't celebrate anything. Because no. what normally is an awesome, what you think is kill, or block, the other team or right. digs it up yep. and, and returns you, it. Which just <laughs> goes to prove you have to play till the whistle. And we've had several occasions throughout this week where teams are used to having the point at that point. And but the other team was able to get a hand under it and, and get it back. And so they celebrate and then they realize that the ball's still in play. A beautiful serve results in a service ace in an early two point lead for the Knights. And that's why he leaves Kara Peter in to serve. <laughs> I would too. Jinxer. Service at oh, what? In. They called it in. Wow. It looked out from here, but we're way across the court. Yep. Back to back service aces. A three point advantage. Oh, it does look in from that view. They don't get a good swing out of that because of the tough serve. <laughs> so I think we they're playing very fluid right now. Yeah. And talked about this before there's no way that Amy Adams shouldn't have at least a single block on her but I'd make sure that my two blockers followed her around the court wherever she went I'd go too and I'd make sure there were two people going potentially three well they took that momentum from the second set and they brought it with them to the third a five-point lead early on let's listen in to the coaches huddle and let's talk strategy with Tipton. two different things mix it up so mix it up who gets to take the swing at it not just summer daniel every time and then mix it up with your shots so don't always hit don't always tip and when you do one or the other make sure you're putting it in different places around the court 
So Summer Daniel has been set 40, has 40 total attempts out of the 90. So almost 50% of the times that they are uh, attacking, it's been Summer Daniel doing it. Well, guess who knows that? Yeah. <laughs> Everybody in the gym. And so they went away from her and set a couple other players and they got the point. That's why you got to take time out sometimes. That's right. The team knows. Now, Barb, you were an uh, All-State Volleyball player, All-American at Iowa, played on the U.S. team, coached Division I at UNI. How do you like to use timeouts? And I know it depends on the strategy, but you like the, you know, to give a little time for the team to talk amongst themselves, then a coach comes in. Sure. You, so or, or how, yeah, so what do you think's most effective? Well, when I was coaching Division One at Purdue and at UNI, I was an assistant, so it wasn't really my gig. But I thought the way that Bobby Peterson does it at UNI was very effective. So she calls a timeout, and the team sits at the bench, and she and the coaches talk about what they're going to talk to the team about and gives the chance to the team to talk about what they need to do, and then they come into the huddle and discuss what needs to happen. So I think that's an effective way to do it. I think it's interesting because you really have about 50 seconds. Yes. It's not like you have a whole time to go right, eat a but peanut butter sandwich or to, you know, go drink a lot of, of Gatorade or something. It's a quick breather, a quick, okay, what do we got to do? All right, now let's go out and do it. That's you exactly know, football right. has much longer timeouts. Basketball has a three-minute timeout. Well, but so... 50 seconds doesn't seem like a lot of time, but you can get a lot said in 50 seconds. And sometimes you're done in 10 or 15 and the team can go back out on the court. The other strategy is when to use them. And right now, I think that was a smart play by Tipton to say, we need it early on before this gets away from us. And right now, Kemper too late. Yeah. really is uh, flaming the fire right now. Nice placement right on that line. But you see that look in Kemper that they had against Osage where they won in five yesterday. It's just that determination, that focus that, no, this is ours, and, and we're not going to let anybody stand in our way. Well, and when they lose the ball, they get it right back. So only three points have been scored on them this set, and they, they've been one and done. Yep. So Kemper gets it back and then scores more than one, and that's how they've gained such a big lead. Kemper leads by seven, looking to go ahead in the series two to one. Tipton won the first 25-19. Kemper won the second 25-16. 10 to four, our score here in the third. Again, you have it tuned into the Class 3A championships. Already handed out a couple of trophies today. Ankeny Centennial, your Class 5A champion, Dubuque Wallert. Defeating Cedar Rapids Xavier in the Class 4A matchup. Big block, big point for Tipton. Chapman. Tipton, Tipton definitely thinks that they aren't done yet. So it's good to see they're still fighting. They're only down five points. That is not insurmountable. So it's good to see that they believe that also. Nice textbook play out of Amy Adams, the lefty. Take a look at that one more time. Well, Again, the benefits. Like she's laughing. The benefits of. Hits her in the face. The benefits of a lefty on that side. Well, the benefits of a lefty on that side are that that is her strong side. So the ball for a right-handed player, the ball has to cross her body. For a left-handed player, that's like having a right-handed player out on the left side. The ball is right there. It doesn't have to cross your body. The timing is easier because of that, and it just makes it, the offense a little bit easier if you're a left-hander out there. Back set. Good swing. More celebration. And one other thing, I mean, we talk about kills a lot. But Mallory Bating doing a great job. It's the libero for Kemper. She's the one wearing the bright yellow top. She's a 5'8 junior libero and getting good passes to the setter, making sure that this offense runs smoothly with Macy Overmore. But this is just a clinic right now being put on by Kemper. 
Are you kidding me? 14-5, wow. And just about everything that can go wrong is going wrong for Tipton. Let's listen inside the huddle for Kemper Catholic. Okay, let's make sure we keep moving. Move, 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 okay? Just focus, focus all, all the time. Every ball, every ball. Go, go, go. Don't let up. Let's go. I agree. Go, go, go. If you're up by nine points at this point in the game, go, go, go. There's not a lot to be said. You can't be doing that much wrong. But on the other hand, Tipton's got to be saying, hey, we got to chip away at this. This is something that we can handle. That's how you play volleyball. You play volleyball one point at a time. You can't get three points or six points or seven points yep. at one time. So you got to play each point and make little chips in, in that lead. Keith Stickrod, 10th year, seven trips to the state tournament, 289 wins, 61 losses at Kemper Catholic. Net violation. Net violation. In the run continues for Kemper. Or maybe I should say center line violation. I think they pointed to the line in the, on the floor. And the, the difference is you can have a body part touch that line, but you can't have a body part go completely over that line or you get called. Barb, how do you build tradition? Because clearly Kemper Catholic has done it. Fourth straight trip to state, 11th in the school history. I'm assuming it's something you got to start young, and there's a bunch of young kids here that made the trip from Carroll that are saying, Hey, in a couple of years, I, I get to be on the high school volleyball team. That's one thing I'd definitely do. If I were a high school coach, I'd get them started young. I'd make sure we had a pet bus of fifth and sixth graders here. I'd build clubs that they could play in throughout the year and just make sure that everybody gets touches on the ball whenever they want them. It seems like there's a lot of the same schools that make it to state year after year after year at every class. Yes. And many of them are bringing home championship trophies today. Yeah. Yep, and that's exactly because of they, that's what they've done. They've built the program. It's, it's become an expectation in that community that if you play volleyball at this school, you're going to get a, a trip to Cedar Rapids. You're going to get a chance at the state championship, and you're going to have a ton of fun. Hard work. Nothing's handed to you. But it's less hard if you're winning. I mean, you I, still I work hard, that. but it doesn't well, it's more seem fun as hard. Too. Yeah, absolutely. I have more fun when I win. Yep. Tipton not giving up, but they got a mountain to climb if they want to win this third set where it has just been controlled by Kemper. Good pass, nice set. Tooled out of bounds, point for the Knights, 19-7. And overall, Kemper's hitting 260 attack percentage, which is good. It'd be interesting to look at just the second and third sets, how efficient they've been. Yeah, it would be interesting to see because they aren't making a lot of mistakes right now. On the other side, just hitting 132 is tipped in. And again, Summer Daniel, 13 kills, five for Amanda Smith, five for Blake Ayler, and three for Cameron Chapman. So this is where I think it would be beneficial for Summer Daniel to have her sets pulled off the net. Give her, she's undersized compared to the block. Give her a chance to use the angles around the blocker's hands. And that's something you can change During, in yes. game. Yep. And there will be times when she'll want a tighter ball, but but with these big blockers, she wants to be able to hit some angles. And if you give her a tight ball, those blockers' hands, it's like hitting into a phone booth or trying to hit out of a phone booth, maybe is a better way to say it. Ball goes out of bounds. The Tigers get the point. And we'll head to the fourth set soon where it will be a must-win scenario for Tipton. That's a great swing. Courtney Schenkelberg hit high off the blocker's hands, made sure there was good contact, but by doing so, it also sent the ball back off the court, and the defenders were sucked in and couldn't touch that ball. Service ace, that's her third. Well, how good is Osage? 
I mean, they took Kemper to five yesterday. And Kemper had to win 25-18, 23-25, 21-25, 25-21, and then 15-13. You can only win by two in the fifth set, and that's what it took. Well, Sage had an incredible season as well. Tigers get their 10th point and trying to get some momentum going. So here's where that unorthodox offense comes in. There's one rotation where Amy Adams plays middle blocker because she's opposite Kara Peter, who is the middle blocker, so they're in, in that rotation. So she plays middle blocker in one rotation, which is hard for a lefty. For the same reasons, it's easy for a lefty to be on the right side. When she's in the middle, the ball has to cross her body for her to swing, and it's really hard to do quicks that way. You can't get the ball to the hitter as quickly. And so it's a little bit awkward, but that's that's how they run their offense, and they've been doing it for years. And it's been working for years. Fourth straight trip to state. Last year was a tough one, but everyone knew they returned everyone, and that's why they had the preseason number one ranking. And they've carried that every single match, every single day of this 2018 season. Set point for the Kemper Catholic Knights. 24 to 11. Dominant. Dominant in the second set, 25-16. Even more dominant here in the third. swing Emily Hermson was up against a single block which has been atypical this match for her she's usually had a double block and that's a little bit harder to, to handle but she got a nice kill out of that single block by going deep cross court Hermson has had a night been a nice role player helping out this team this year nearly a hundred kills on the year there it is final score in the third Kemper 25, Tipton 12. A lot of work needs to be done for Tipton. Down but not out. Let's take a look at that last point. Well, and this is a great touch by Daniel on the defensive play side of it, but just not high enough for anybody to get to. Nice swing by Adam. Things are clicking for Kemper. We'll be back with the fourth set right after this. You're watching High School Volleyball Championships on Iowa Public Television. An all new season of We'll Meet Again with stories from Vietnam, women's rights, and escape from Cuba. Your mother tells you you're going to go alone to the United States? That was really hard. Events that changed the world. My career changed. What was impossible was now possible. And people who changed each other's lives. What do you want to say to him? I need him to know he saved my life. Enjoy the start of a new season, Tuesday evening at 7. This month in Passport, your on-demand library of the best of PBS. How can this house of secrets ever be called a home? You would be signing his death warrant. Is that what you want? I'm going to be exploring using laser technology to reveal secrets of the ancient world in a whole new way. He said, welcome home. It was just a powerful moment. These and other shows are available with Passport. Become a member of this PBS station. Sign in and start streaming today. Are you a member of an organization or part of a school that is looking for engaging free resources to use with youth? IPTV is more than a television station. We have access to thousands of research-based learning assets. Our highly trained staff, many former educators, are ready and waiting to come meet your educational needs at no charge. IPTV participates in STEM festivals, math events, and literacy nights. We provide professional development to formal educators and partner with families and informal educators to get relevant resources in the hands of learners to encourage engagement and retention. 
contact Educational Services to find out how IPTV can support learners of all ages. A very, very good Kemper Catholic team has been flexing their muscles in the second and third set. Let's see how Tipton can respond because Kemper Catholic has really taken the momentum to say the least here. They've stolen it and they're charging forward. This is a different Kemper Catholic team than we saw in the first set. And because of that, it's a different Tipton team. Just look in their eyes. They're very determined and focused right now. Let's go to the start of the fourth set. And it's gonna be Tipton who gets a chance to serve in a must win scenario if they want to extend this match, extend their opportunity to win their school's first ever state title. Not there. Again, much, a lot of size on the side of Kemper Catholic and just a very fluid uh, offense and defense to offense transition. Well, like we've been talking about, Peter is there every time for her setter, and so she gets set and can do a lot with the ball. Adams with 16 kills on 40 attempts, hitting 325 for Kemper. Grace Molock, seven kills on 13 attacks, hitting 462. Six kills apiece for Schenkelberg and Peter, and five kills for Niehaus. Another point makes it 2 nothing in favor of the Knights. For Tipton, Summer Daniel close to a triple-double already. She has 14 kills, 10 assists, 8 digs. Amanda Smith, 6 kills, 21 assists, 10 digs. So both of them will probably likely get a triple-double here. And Blake Ayler with 5 kills to go along with 11 digs. Nice swing by Chapman on that. She was able to keep it to the left back side of the court. The back row defender touched it. Great play. There's the side out. And let's see if Tipton can do a run here early on in the fourth set. So that time Peter turned it the other way. She's been going a lot of cross back, or a lot of cut back across her body. And that time she went more straight ahead and was able to use a little bit of an inside out swing to get the kill around that blocker. Peter has been serving bullets over the net. Bullets. She has 42 aces in the regular season. Schenkelberg had 49. That's pretty impressive for a 6'3 middle hitter to have 330 kills, 42 aces, 137 digs, and 75 blocks. That is the epitome of a well-rounded volleyball player. A one-handed slam dunk. Nice job by Chapman to be up and take control of that ball. The official absolutely says the ball was above the or over the plane of the net, so it wasn't allowable contact. If the ball wouldn't have broken the plane of the net, then she could have gotten called for reaching over. She plays with a little fire in her belly, doesn't yeah, I like she? It. <laughs> Got that one through the wall of the Tipton defense. And that's kill number 17. Mercy, what a, what a performance. Knee house. Again, they don't get a good swing out of it because not the best pass. Now they get a good swing, and it results in a point. 4-3. Ayler did a nice job of using the outside blocker's right hand or her outside hand so that she gets a contact and then pushes it out of bounds so that she gets a kill out of it. If you're just tuning in, live coverage of the 2018 Iowa High School Girls Volleyball Championships. We started at 10 a.m. The 5A match that went to Ankeny Centennial. 12-15, we tipped off the 4A match, which went to Dubuque Wallert, and now here at 3A. If the Kemper Catholic Knights win this match, this set, they're your 3A champions. They're facing off against the Tipton Tigers. Well, and there's Moloch skying up 
against a double block. The block wasn't quite close, and she was able to hit that hole. Well, I'm impressed because Mullock just doesn't get many attacks. She's seven of 13, hit nearly 500. That's like a like a batting average, yeah. right? Yeah. Well. It, what we think is good is the same as a batting, batting average. We like it to be at around 300 or higher, but it's not figured the same way as a batting average is. The hitting percentage takes the number of kills minus the number of errors and divided by the total attempts, where a batting average doesn't, in, doesn't really count for errors. Here's Amanda Smith. A very, very important member of this Tipton team. A record-setting year for Tipton. Too long. And point to Tipton. So when you get that set, depending where you are on the court, at what point do you make the decision of what type of shot you're going to use and where you're going to put the ball? Well, the key is making it look like you're going to do the same thing every time. So you may not make the decision until you're in the air and you see where the blocker's hands are. But it also depends on if your feet are in the right spot. So if your feet, if your feet don't get to the ball, you may have to tip just because you're out of reach of being able to hit it. So it kind of depends on a lot of different things. Well, the Tipton fan base and student section having a lot more to cheer about, very similar to what they had in the first set. We're trying to do everything. Those Help. are great serves. <laughs> yeah, that one very shallow coming up on it. And Kemper with the point. Well, so one, of the, one of the strategies for serving short balls like that and if you remember, one of our keys for Tipton was to serve strategically, well, actually serve for aces. But part of the reason was because the Kemper Catholic strengths are a middle and a right side. You need good passing for that. So if you can serve short into the pattern for their approaches, that can sometimes get them out of sync. Tied at seven. So what is Tipton doing better now, or what is Kemper doing worse now that is allowing this to be way, a lot more evenly balanced than what we saw in sets two and three, Barb. Well, I think they're serving short. We've seen that. But they're also, Tipton, this is Tipton. And they're also mixing up the offense so that Summer Daniel isn't the only one getting the ball. They talked about it in several different timeouts, and you can see that it's working for them as, as Chapman gets, well, that Chapman got the set. She didn't get the, the point, but. The Knights lead it by one. But again, much more competitive than what we saw in the 25-16 win second set and the 25-12 win third set for Kemper. Nice touch. Four contacts. But that's the kind of effort that Tipton's gonna need if they wanna push this to five sets. Well, they rallied in the quarterfinals, and the coach said, you know, we just quit thinking so much and just started playing, and that really helped them go on a 9-1 run and rally for the victory. Well, and sometimes I like to think in a situation where you got killed in two sets and you're facing the end of your season, not finish, fish, finishing it like you thought or were hoping, go out there and just have fun. Yep. and enjoy the experience and see what happens. Because a lot of times when you have fun, good things happen. And Tipton might get in the danger zone. That's what she says when everybody's feeling it. <laughs> <laughs> they're in the danger zone in the first set and they're trying to get back there here in the fourth. That's one of the songs, like if I'm working out, that's that's one of my, my go-to songs. Huh. Not, not you? <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't really have go-to songs. Okay, I'll get you a playlist. Oh, good. I'll, I'll make you a mixtape. <laughs> nine to nine. Able to get it out of the net there. Great up in some way, somehow, it results in a point. So They that, weren't expecting that to be returned so quickly. No, and that is part of what happens when you uh, are 
it's scrappy with your defense. You go for every ball, and you just make sure that you get touches on things because you know the offense from the other team is just going to keep hammering away. So you got to get a touch. Kemper responds. The first set was exactly like this. One or two points separating Kemper and Tipton until Tipton pulled away when it was 1919. Second and third sets were not like that. Another point and another lead for the Tipton Tigers. There's Chapman getting the kill off the block, up against the single block, using the hands, swinging hard, kind of to the sideline. So if there weren't any hands there, that ball would be way out of the gym. I mean, it wouldn't even try and catch the court. Hermiston the serve. Got it through the block. And we're tied at 11. Well, Coach, see the replay here, Coach. Amy Collender in her 19th year of coaching, 16 of them at Tipton. She said it's just such a fun group to be around and work with. It's a very smart group. Tipton, they really understand volleyball. Said the seniors have played volleyball a long time together outside of high school. They've played club AAU and have seen great improvement in a very determined group. Sense of calm with the team when they never panic. Well, and they don't really look like they're panicking. They look like they're trying to find solutions to mm. the problem at hand. The strength is really their offense, but their defense has slowly been improving here at state, scrappy and better. I think defensively they look amazing. Well, she's very critical as a coach yeah. trying to find And she's seen it more than just to, this week. Yep. The defense there. Hard to play good defense when that's coming at you. Mercy. Well, again, this run for Kemper is coming with Kara Peters serving. And Amy Adams getting 19 kills so far today. A timeout on the court, 14-11 our score. Let's go inside the Tipton huddle. It's going really well, right? When we run our offense, that's going really well, right? The mix-up has helped, and we're right in this match. Keep working on. Yep, looking for the holes. Smart, yes, smart, 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 right? Play in defense, get down low, and we also have to get some hands up in her face here, okay? Right here, we get this side out and we roll, okay? Hey, okay. Let's go. Let's go. One, Let's of the, go. one of the things that they are looking for is holes in the block. They are having a lot of holes, and one of the things that they need to communicate with each other is where to swing when you see those holes. So that's that's on the team, and one of the players said that. So we'll kind of pay attention to if they're if they're using that. Right at the midway point of this critical fourth set. If Kemper wins it with plays like that, they're your class 3A champion. The other that she said in the huddle was they need to get some hands in her face. And they're talking about Amy Adams. That time they had a double block up, but Adams beat the block by getting there quickly and went between the two blockers. Sixteen to eleven. The Kemper Catholic fans are feeling it. Still some work needs to be done here. The Tipton fan, fans are trying to get their team back into it. That's what I love. I love fans yep. that cheer when the team needs it most. Right. Not just when they're rocking and rolling right. and doing great. That'll help them. Anytime you get a great block like that, that will get your fans going. And Chapman does a great job of getting up there and all by herself putting that ball down. 16-12 is our score. Into the net. 17-12. Tipton won the first set 25-19. Kemper won set two 25-16 and set three 25-12. A reminder, we're just at class 3A. We still have two more championships after this. 
with the 2A and 1A championships. Just a hair out of bounds, asking for a touch, not awarded. Well, and Summer Daniel is trying to get her team to keep their heads in this game. She doesn't believe it's out of reach yet, and I have to agree with her. In the sport of volleyball, the momentum swings so greatly that if they get a couple good points, if Tipton gets a couple good points, they can be right back in this thing. Summer Daniel with that triple-double, 16 kills, 14 assists, 12 digs. 19-12 now. That was a nice try by Coffrin to get a touch on that ball, but it just knocked it down where nobody in the back row could defend it. Kempers finding their groove here in this set. Let's go inside the Kemper Catholic huddle with Keith Stickrod. Every point, every point, every point, okay? Remember, relax, do our job, do our job and do it right. Let's go, right away, let's go. So basically, he's got it right, do our job. They're ahead, if they wanted to go point for point back and forth, they'd win this match and this state championship. He doesn't want that to happen. He'd like <laughs> to get a few more points than just one at a time. So they're on a run of three, and he'd like them to get a few more. Coach Stickrod's been the head coach of Kemper Catholic 10 years. Seven times he's led them to the state tournament. Looking to end the 2018 trip to Cedar Rapids with the championship. So close. But again, Tipton loved that fight, returning every player, the entire starting lineup from last year, which was their first time they've ever made the state tournament. And Ayler did a nice job that time. She took a swing, it was kind of a weird set that came at her, and she took a nice swing, it wasn't overly aggressive, but it was into the blocker's hands and wiping it out of bounds. Five points away from taking this set and taking this match. Number five, Courtney Schenkelberg, the 5'11 senior outside hitter, leads the team in aces. What a tough angle to take on that. Going to the middle, get out of the way. <laughs> That is your Drake Relays champion for the shot put and discus. She takes the pass and then she's in for the set and she doesn't care, she's gonna hit it. And that's exactly what brought Tipton to this match was their aggressive hitting. Blocked. Trying the other side. Out of bounds, it was close. Maybe a little bit closer than what Coach Collender would like him to let go, <laughs> but she seemed to know it was out, and it was. 20 to 15. Tipton putting a mini run together here, trying to force a fifth set. Another long rally. No team willing to budge an inch. What a tough play. That was set really tight to the net. I thought the only way she's gonna hit it is if she runs into the net. Or hits it right into the bottom of the net. A run by Tipton makes it a four point ball game. 2016, played a 25, win by two. Let's listen inside the Tipton huddle with coach Amy Collender. Again, you gotta believe in yourself, okay? You gotta believe in yourself that you can go get this, okay? We did do this two days ago. Let's go, let's go. Hey, do or die right here. Going at him, going at him. they did this two days ago. They know what it takes, and every volleyball player in the world <laughs> knows about comebacks. Kemper knows it from last year when they were up 2-0 and Eric. ended up losing in five. So everybody who's ever touched a volleyball knows it's possible. 
They were talking about two days ago, the quarterfinals when they're down, went on a nine to one run to defeat New Hampton. And then yesterday, defeating Mount Vernon three to one. Summer Daniel had 27 kills yesterday in that semifinal. She's at 22 right now. Amy Adams would like to be the last server of this match. Let's see if she gets her wish. Blocked at the net, down for the point. Three points away from your class 3A championship. Well, and it looks like Kemper's starting to feel it a little bit, but I think Tipton has maybe a little bit left in their tank. Kira Peter did a great job there, reaching over. She's way over the net, putting that ball down. It's in. Barely. Well, I'm not really sure why Kemper didn't go for that. I'm not sure if they thought it was outside the antenna or what the problem was, but they just kind of stopped. 22-17, out of system, and it is not the play that they wanted, but because of some tough serving. Coffin. Another tough, tough serve. <laughs> I thought that was gonna be an ace. That kid has a lot of grit. Out of bounds. Oh my! Here come the Tigers, trailing just by three. How big is the serving in this run here, Barb? It's huge, and <laughs> she's serving awesome. I'd be so scared back there. And How about an ace? What do you do? What in I mean, the world do you do? Look at Coffrin, she's stone-faced. She doesn't care. She's She's won the Drake relay. She's just going to put the ball over there and see what happens. I love it. You can have an impact in every part of the court. Let's go inside the Kemper Catholic huddle now. So just make sure, be ready, be ready, be ready. Okay, get your play figured out. Let's go. Right now. So Coach Stickrod says to be ready, and he's right, because that serve is coming over tough, and you're never sure where the ball's going to go off the passer's arm. So be ready to run it down and send it back over. And I don't care if you're ready; it's still you got to handle this thing. <laughs> Absolutely. And have a feeling she's not going to hit it into the net. They finally got a good pass, and then it led to an easy kill. Well, and we'll look at this again. Kara Peter, who's a middle blocker, they had her go to the outside and take a, a swing, which is not her normal position, but she's good at that too. Mallory Bading, we talked about what she means defensively to this back row. Serving, blocking, point, match point for the Carroll Kemper Catholic Knights. The backs squarely pressed against the wall are tipped in. They won the first set 25-19, but Kemper Catholic has looked very good in sets two, three, and four. Yeah. 24-21. Adams has 22 kills on 58 attempts for Kemper. Hitting 310. 10 kills for Moloch, 10 kills for Peter, and it is match point again for Kemper Catholic. Service ace. Oh, I love sports. <laughs> I do too. You never know what's going to happen next. And you never know the, the size of the heart. Match point, Kemper Catholic, 3A matchup, and they get it. It wasn't easy, but they got it. Ranked number one on day one of the season. They are number one on the last day of the season. Your class 3A champions, Kemper Catholic Knights. Well, well fought match by the Tipton Tigers. They really did a great job coming in here and fought hard. They're 
generally undersized, but they are scrappy and they play really well together as a team. Let's look at that final match point. The last one that they needed to win the championship. Well, and you're gonna set the player who helped get you here. The one of the one of the two go-to players that Carol Kemper has, Kara Peter, taking care of the last point of the match. You gotta think that would hurt. They don't care. They just won the state championship. <laughs> they just got Barb. their pink T-shirt. <laughs> Congratulations to Tipton, 39 and four. Finish with the state runner-up trophy. Kemper Catholic finishes as the champion. Let's award the all tournament team for class 3A. Athletic Union Board of Directors presenting awards to the 2018 class 3A all tournament team is Jan Bo uh, John Sandboth, regional manager for the Iowa Farm Bureau. Ladies and gentlemen, your 2018 Class 3A All-Tournament team from Kemper Catholic, Macy Overmall. From Tipton, Amanda Smith. From Osage, Daniel Johnson. From Mount Vernon, Rory Light. From Kemper Catholic, Kara Peter. From Kemper Catholic, Amy Adams. And the all-tournament team captain from Tipton, Summer Daniel. I think I would agree with that all tournament team. A great group of ladies, heart, fight, determination, and very well represented as you see on your screen. Adams from Kemper, Peter from Kemper, Overmole from Kemper, Daniels, and uh, Smith, Johnson, and Light. Well, it speaks volumes that Summer Daniel got the captain after losing the championship match. She is an all-around player, and she did amazing things at this tournament. Just couldn't quite get over that last hump. We'll award the championship and runner-up trophy now. The Tipton Tigers and head coach, Amy Colander. And now your 2018 Class 3A champion, Coach Keith Stickrod and the Knights of Kemper Catholic. Number one ranking all season, Barb, that's not easy. No. And they proved it here today. They absolutely, Kemp, Kemper won that match. They went out and, and they took it. Last year reached the 3A semifinals. They're up two to zero. They win one more match and they're playing on championship Friday, they couldn't get it done. Waterloo Columbus wins the semifinal. Waterloo Columbus wins the championship. That's something that Kemper Catholic has had to live with each and every day. And they weren't gonna let it happen again this trip to Cedar Rapids, and it didn't. They just erased it. Tipped in a great season, record-breaking year. They are your runner up at Class 3A. Well, we've handed out a number of trophies. The fun ain't over yet. Stay tuned to Iowa Public Television for the Class 2A and 1A championships. We'll be back with plenty more exciting coverage live from downtown Cedar Rapids here only on Iowa Public Television. Funding for the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union, Iowa Farm Bureau Girls State Volleyball Championships is provided by 
The path to greatness starts early. The Iowa Farm Bureau believes in Iowa's youth and their pursuit of greatness. That's why we're proud to be the title sponsor of the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union. Each student's effort is important, and when one rises, we all rise to a better Iowa. Fairway, along with Nabisco, Frito-Lay, and Sara Lee, is a proud sponsor of the Iowa Girls Sports Championships. We congratulate all the schools and student athletes participating in this year's Girls High School State Volleyball Championships. Fairway, proud to care for the places we work and live. By Musco Lighting, the sports lighting specialists, providing lighting systems for you, your project, and your community.